But the rainforests of Asia are almost as old as fire itself. They have tremendous powers of regeneration, the ancient strength of vegetation. Certain species are invulnerable to fire. They do not burn, they simply resist. The simul trees are fireproof and they are therefore the final refuge in the jungle. Chitwan means the heart of the jungle. And once more in this part of the world, legend and reality go hand in hand. The fact that certain species burn and others don't favors the growth of the so-called secondary forest, different from the original jungle, clearer and with more light, in which grass is able to grow on the ground. It is the perfect place for the ungulates, a paradise for deer who here form herds unlike their solitary relatives in the primary forests. The ancient inhabitants of the primitive jungle are forced to climb up ever higher in search of food. This is also home to a bird which for 3,000 years now has been an aesthetic symbol for man. This is the land of the peacock, the place in which evolution created such a strange creature. It is the national bird of India, sacred for Hindus and Buddhists alike, the destroyer of snakes and, according to popular belief, capable of hypnotizing them. The characteristic territorial cry of the males warns rivals that this territory is occupied. Then the suitor displays his feathers, one meter sixty centimeters long, in the hope of sufficiently impressing one of these visiting females that she will agree to be the mother of his chicks. The females prefer the males with most peacock eyes, and these continue to grow throughout their lifetime. So the older the male, the larger his tail, and the more females he is able to attract. Such a flamboyant display in the middle of a jungle full of tigers is a risky business, but in nature, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And what is more, the more superbly decorated the males, the less they participate in rearing the chicks. See you around sometime, honey. however, like the good primates they are, do have a long, close family life. The baby langurs spend a lot of time playing and learning from the adults the tricks of life up in the treetops. On the ground or up in the highest branches, the little ones jump and wave their arms, developing their binocular vision, which gives them extraordinary spatial balance. In their young brains, the neuronal connections are established which some day will save their lives when they have to flee from danger swinging from branch to branch. But 
But the jungle floor is where the organic material collects and the microorganisms and invertebrates that feed on it. Simian societies can be just as complex as ours, but when it comes to organization, none is as perfect as this one, the termites. The termites do not form the bulk of their diet, but for older langurs, they are like spicy chili peppers, an amusing snack that breaks the monotony of all that leaf salad. Just stick your finger in and suck. There are so many species of termite in these jungles that no one knows the precise number. Their fortresses are intelligent buildings with their own air conditioning, but this doesn't prevent them from being constantly attacked. These are sloth bears. Their characteristic thick, long lips are designed to literally suck up the termites from their holes. Their sight is poor, their smell worse, and they are renowned for their bad temper. They are among the strangest bears in the world, and local stories speak of them as fierce beasts. The last jungles in Asia still contain so many mysteries that not a year goes by without it being discovered that an ancient legend really exists, or that a mythical animal has always lived here. But the myths spoken of in ancient travelers' tales are now up against a formidable enemy, a human population that is constantly growing. Like this giant boar, man and the great jungle stand looking each other in the face, not knowing what to do, unsure who will take the first step. At any moment, mutual respect may turn into aggression. And what will happen to the unicorn then? India contains 16% of the world's population on just 2% of the land surface. But the tradition of creating forest and nature reserves dates from the 4th century BC. For the time being, Chitwan and Kasiranga are a good home for the rhinoceroses, with around 400 in the Nepalese park and 1,200 in the Indian one as well as other small groups scattered across another six areas. The total population estimated by the World Wildlife Fund in February 2000 is just 2,095 animals on the entire planet. Weighing almost 2,000 kilos and weighing 4.2 meters in length, it needs up to five square kilometers to cover its territorial and dietary needs. Its constant movements among the grass create an entire network of tracks which other animals take advantage of. It's hard to believe that such a formidable animal almost disappeared forever as the result of false, ridiculous, magical and medicinal beliefs and what is more, beliefs held by people living far away from these animals' homeland. The Indian rhinoceros deposits its feces, creating over the years large piles which act as olfactory markers or beacons, defining its territory. Gigantic dung heaps that are impossible to ignore, even for the least sensitive nose. <laughs> 